Hello everyone, Dan Swift here, founder and CEO at Numentum, and welcome to the speaker series, where we spotlight some of the most interesting minds in the world of revenue generation. At Numentum, we help forward-thinking B2B organizations create better buyer experiences and deliver new momentum to their revenue engine. On this episode of the speaker series, we speak with Lee Shufro, Chief Revenue Officer at Synapse, We have a great conversation around leading from the front, building workflows from scratch, and why you don't want to be a Chateau General. Lee, welcome to the speaker series. Dan, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm gonna call you an old friend. Can I can Ah. I say that, old friend? Yes, you can, sir. You can. Absolutely. We go back. I think it is now. I was doing the map about four or five years now. Yeah. Yeah. So I was a, uh, I was an early Dan Swift and, yeah, and empire selling uh, adopter, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours and what you're doing. And I'm, I'm, I was honored you asked me to do this. So I'm, uh, I'm all game. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And you were indeed in year number one of the empire journey. So we're going to get into all of that. Now, I just want to clarify something. I asked you before the interview, and I think I might have butchered it already, synapses or synapse? Synapse, like in the synapse. brain. Like in the oh, brain, synapse. synapse. There you go. There you go. I want to get it right because with a- Firing of remember. neurons. Yeah. There you go. With yes. a 35, 40-minute conversation coming up, synapse. Okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> so, well, let's talk about it a little bit. So, you're the chief revenue officer at Synapse. Now, for context, we've got a lot of listeners all around the world. Can you share just a little bit about- the company itself, and what is it that you are solving for your customers? Yeah, sure. So Synapse is a division of Dot Dash Meredith. Now, Dot mm-hmm. Dash Meredith was just formed in December of 2021 mm-hmm. when Dot Dash, which is a primarily a digital publisher that's part of IAC, Interactive Corporation by Barry Diller, purchased the Meredith Corporation for about $2.7 billion. And we were, mm. we're a division of the Meredith Corporation. Uh, Meredith is primarily very large into print magazines like People, Better Homes and Gardens, have about you know multiple millions of subscribers. And really Synapse is a division that is an expert in acquiring what we call continuous service subscribers. And so basically these are you know people who sign up, they pay with their credit card. It's, it's you know the, the membership model. Mm-hmm. We have two primarily two primary businesses. One is <clears throat> we have an online, believe it or not, voice of customer mm-hmm. uh, survey and PS tool that we that we use for thousands of uh, e-tailers. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a partnership marketing where, a group where we work with very very large uh, retailers, travel companies, reward companies, and reward programs uh, to help them you know, with monetization or loyalty programs with their customer base. Amazing. Now you've been there for, what is it now? It's coming up to two years? About two years. Yeah. It's about a, yeah, a little bit over a year and a half. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so obviously bang in the middle of the pandemic, you've, yes. your tenure has been there. So the pandemic's obviously hit so many industries in so many different ways, many of them harder than others, but how have the last two years been for, for your industry? Yeah. So, I mean, there's just been, you know, profound changes. Um, And I think, you know, for me, um, I started in October of 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to go to the office at that time, which was a shock, you know, (laughs) a big Mm -hmm. step to do, but I, you know, but I did it. And, um, you know, I started with kind of no, no pipeline, no Mm -hmm. pipeline. Everything had completely dried up. Um, and really it it was really starting from, from, from the ground, from, you know, from, from zero. And it was really a process of kind of building, creating a strategy. Um, so for this business, you know, it was the really eradication of a pipeline. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had, you know, so it was, it was, it was a big, big process to kind of get that structured, set, hire people to support it. Right, right. And so you must have, during that process, you must have learned a lot about 
yourself both personally and professionally, right? What can you share with with our listeners? Because a lot of the people listening today are your peers, but they're also people who aspire to be a CRO at, at some point. So, so what have you learned about yourself? Yeah, so I'll talk about myself first, and then mm-hmm. then we'll talk about professional. So, so myself, I mean, I learned how to be a homeowner, which is a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but you know, I, I, I there lived, are no wrong answers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, li- I lived in New York City for 20 years, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, when there's a problem, you call the super. And I know Dan, mm-hmm. I know you know, you know what I'm oh, talking yeah. about here, you know. And um, and then you become the super, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you 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 get a house and you become the super, and you're managing land and mm. you know and roofs and everything like that and so i guess i bring that up because like everybody there's quite a bit of juggling you know when you're when we were all pulled from kind of the office grind mm. and you're at home you're you know you adopt um a lot right and so you be you know during the day you know you're wearing multiple hats right i mean you're mm-hmm. in a meeting and then the meeting's over and you got a 10 minute break and then you put your super hat on and you got to fix the dishwasher. And then, um, and then, you know, your son or daughter comes home and, you know, you got to make their lunch or you have homework or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So um, it was looking back, you know, it was, it's kind of easy, right? You go to the office, you're there and you're, you're totally focused and kind of locked Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes when you're at home, okay, well, how do I, you know, how do, how do I, how do I do this? How do I be effective? And how do I make sure the folks on my team are effective as well? Yeah. Right. Um, professionally, I think it really, be, and, you know, professionally I had in a way, I'm going to call it a benefit of, right. Of kind of starting out where mm-hmm. zero pipeline, you know, zero process. It really made me think about the basics. <clears throat> you know, I really had I, I didn't have any system or process I had to be beheld to. Mm. Um, I have an incredibly supportive uh, leader who basically, you know, you know, gave me the the empowerment to try to figure things out. So it really was the basics. Okay, in sales, uh, how do we gen? How do okay in, in marketing? How do we generate demand? Right. How do we really generate demand? How do we in sales? What are we trying to do and who are we trying to target? And um, and so for me, it was a lot of, OK, well, like who are you know, what are the what are the books? I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a learner by reading. Right. Like what are the books I have to go back to? What are the sales mm-hmm. philosophies I need to I need to incorporate? Um, so it you know, whenever you switch jobs, it kind of. It, it really, for me, I've always found it invigorating. It feels like almost a blessing in a way, right? When you start a new job, because it does give you a chance to kind of reset and um, and go and look at those those fundamentals that maybe you haven't had to check for a while. So let's talk about your career journey to CRO. Now, I did my due diligence. Obviously, we, we know each other reasonably well now, but... um. So you've got your MBA from Cornell's uh, Johnson School of Management, 10 years with American Express in multiple leadership positions. I know you took what you describe in your LinkedIn profile as a, as a brief hiatus um, in the startup space. And I know two acquisitions happened there. So I want to learn more about that. And then you came back to American Express, but the GBT, the, the Global Business Travel Group, and spent three years there. So what, what big learnings did you have from your time in the startup space and did that experience help you when you returned to American Express, albeit in the GBT group? Sure. So I always had this, you know, entrepreneurial itch mm. uh, that I needed to scratch, right? Especially being with such a, you know, a matrix corporation like, you know, American Express. And, um, you know, I, I got what I asked for, you know what I mean? These, these, you know, when you're in a startup and anybody who's, who's in one or has been in one, Um, they are, it is, it is your, you know, it was in some ways terrifying in some ways exhilarating, right? I mean, you experience it all, right? You experience it all. And, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, also in, you know, in a sales role too, it's, it's really risky, right? Because as a sales leader, um, there are different types of sales leaders, right? And depending on a startup, the startup, you know, 
based on its kind of growth curve, um, they may they may need your skill set when you start, but then as they evolve, right, they may evolve into a different type of skill set. So mm. the big lesson, right, was like you know you you really relationships and especially the relationship with your boss is really really important, mm-hmm. right. Um, and I'll talk about, I mean, trust for me and building trust. I, I mean, to me, this is, it, it's, it's the whole ball game. Right. And, um, you know, I was at a couple startups and, you know, and sometimes I had a great, great bond with the founders and sometimes, you know, not so much. Right. Mm. And, you know, um, so I was, you know, I was an old boss of mine from American Express contacted me and I, you know, I was at a, another role and he contacted me and he said, look, I'm, I'm interested in having you come back to this, you know, company, American Express Global Business Travel. And I said, stop right there. I said, I could sweep the floors. If, if you're asking me to come and sweep the floors for you, I will do that. Mm-hmm. You are somebody, you are somebody, I, I'm in. You yeah. know, you don't even have to tell me. And now it was a great role. It was a great position. I had a great experience. But, you know, what I took was your relationship with your leader um, is critical, right? I yeah. mean, it's kind of, it, 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 it's what it's all about, right? It's for, and I'm sure, you know, Dan, the people that work for you love you, right? I mean, you want to, you know, that is a type of relationship you want to have. It mm-hmm. gets you motivated, right? It makes waking up, <clears throat> waking up and going to work or doing work that much more easy. And um, you know, I, I'm not saying that that's um, in, in, endemic to startups, but you know, you are rolling and running so fast. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 you know, it can be difficult to establish and solidify you know the relationships that you need. So. What what was it about that person? I'm curious now, um, because we've all had leaders and we've all had good leaders. But what made that leader great and literally someone that you described as you'd go and sweep the floors? What was it about that person? Yeah, so uh, you know, I'm going to shout out to David Reamer, who's the head of mm-hmm. commercial at you know American Express Global Business Travel. Um, you know, he's he's like the total package, right? I mean, it's like you know, um, he's somebody that you know, um, you know, he, he really cares about you as the employee. And, you know, he also has incredibly high standards. Um, and, and it's really difficult to meet those standards, right? But like, mm. you want to work for people who are going to, you know, enable you to get to levels that, you know, you don't even, you didn't even know that you could reach yourself right Mm -hmm. and so um you know you want to work for you know smart people um so he's you know he's he's smart he has incredible standards you you know and he's gonna he's and he's got your back right and like that is if you have all of that and if somebody and if you're lucky enough where somebody says hey look you know you worked for me and i liked your work and i and i and i trust you enough you know, that I want you to come and, and do this again for me, you know, that's, an, it's, it's incredibly, um, you know, it's, 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 it's an honor to do that. I want to stay on leadership with you, actually, because you've got a, sure. um, a LinkedIn recommendation that I'm looking at right now, and it really caught my eye. And it said, and for everyone listening, it says this, um, and it's describing you, obviously, so compassion, one of the attributes of a great leader is compassion. Lee took the time to know more about his teams than just what they could do for him. He knows my wife's name, my children, and showed a genuine interest in me as a person. He is a, fir- a fair but firm leader. So let's talk leadership. How do, how do you describe your leadership style and, and has it developed over time? Yeah, sure. So I really believe you have to lead from the front. Okay, you have to be able to relate <clears throat> and you have to, you know, you have to to talk the talk. You got to walk the walk, you know, mm-hmm. and I always say I would not ask you to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Mm-hmm. Right. So so a, a bit of a history lesson is that, you know, in World War One, they had these generals. They called them chateau generals. 
Chateau General. So what the Chateau Generals would do is they would they'd hang out in the Chateau and they'd have the troops go ahead right, mm-hmm. and fight the fight. And, um, you know, and these are generals that are, you know, making plans on maps. They don't know the terrain. It's very difficult to have effective communication when you're back in the Chateau and, you know, um, your troops are out in the front. And so, you know, I really believe that you've got to you've got to be in it now, depending on your role, um, you know, there are there are different ways you can do that. Right. I mean, it may, it's, it's not a one size fits, fits all in terms of doing that. I mean, we, we, we use a calling technology and I will I will use that calling technology. I will I will make the mm-hmm. calls um, so I can I can, you know, mirror mirror the behaviors that I ask for, but also so I can experience it and I can understand it better. Um, so, you know, it's really, you know, I mean, and look, how has it evolved? I mean, look, I remember one time, you know, I started a role and I talked about trust, right? And like, when you mm-hmm. start a role, especially with a new team, it's all about establishing trust, right? And, 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 and sometimes that's difficult, right? And I remember one team, you know, we, we were not connecting, right? And, and we had a sit, we had, we had a sit down and I was like, what do you, what can I do? What, what, what mm-hmm. can I do? And they said, we need you to get out there and, and do what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, if that's what it's going to take. I'm, I'm all for it. You know, um, sign me up, you know? And so, um, you know, so you got to lead from the front. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to roll up your sleeves. Um, you got to use the, you got to you, know, you always say you got to, you got to drink your champagne, right? Drink mm-hmm. the champagne. Um, and, 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 and the more you can do that, the more trust you're going to build, um, and the more effective you're going to be in terms of, you know, any decisions that you need to make. I've worked for a few Chateau generals in my time. <laughs> uh, I do like Sip, that too. Sipping their, sipping their champagne back in the... Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. High-fiving each other at the end of a quarter when it's like, what did you actually do? But anyway, um... Uh, so, so let's exactly. talk, let's let's down leadership for just a little bit more because obviously during the pandemic, um, it's gonna for most leaders, right? It's a new leadership skill. You mentioned it at the top of the call where um, just life, right, sometimes gets in the way of being yeah. able to do ordinarily. So so what what about leadership in, in during the pandemic? How's it been running your sales organization and and the cross functional teams? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it, it really, you know, it really, uh, look, a lot had a shift to, to retention, you know, I mean, yeah. um, I mean, look, there was a period of working through furloughs and, and a lot of dislocation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I really believe, and this is maybe from American Express, you know, you have to retain the, the whole, you know, secret to moving a business to the next level is retaining your high performers, you know, mm. period. Um, so a lot shifted to retention. And what do, what do I need to, what do I need to do to retain folks? So, um, whereas before, you know, I felt, I felt like before the pandemic, there was a, a real line between personal and, and business, you know, and you, mm. you kind of, you know, like you kind of don't mention you have a child, you know, maybe you, if you don't have children or you, if you have, you know, affairs that you have to attend to, it's, it's kind of right. Like it's the workplace. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and so I really had to kind of, you have to kind of knock those down because for better, for better or for worse. Right. And, and mm-hmm. it can go either way here. Right. But for better or for worse, like um, it's, you know, you have to care about people's lives, right. You can't mm-hmm. just, you can't just parachute in and 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 be their work person, right? I mean, it's really now um, you have to care about them and, and care yeah. about their entire life. So it's um, it, it, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, you said it at the top of the call, and and I, I feel like this now where there was a lot of talk and a lot of um, commentary about it, but then when we got into the the, the last two years. Um, you start realizing that people on the team do have the young kids or they have to get the kids to school or when we haven't went through that period of time when everyone was home, a lot of people were homeschooling. And when you actually then know that people are in that situation, 
when you offer that flexibility, right? People people will run through walls for you if you just if you plan the schedule around their their lives, right? Yeah, I mean, I you know when I started um, here at Synapse, uh, we had one day a week in the office, right? And then mm-hmm. and then I I felt you know I mean I was toying a little bit with well you know what maybe we should do two days in the office and this was mm-hmm. you know a year and a half ago and um, you know I'm I'm not getting a good vibe from you know the team was mm-hmm. not. You know, was not there. And so, yeah. um, you know, so it became, you know, I said, you know what, um, you know, we're not doing it. Yeah. You know, you know, we're not doing yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Um, nope. You know, and, and, and now, you know, now um, as a, as a, as a company, we're going back to the office and, you know, folks have some real um, concerns, you know, and some mm. real now, now, you know, in two years, their lives have changed and now other people are relying on them. And so at the end of the day, right, I mean, it's like you, you have to, you're either going to make accommodations, um, you know, which is going to go a long way towards retaining folks or, mm-hmm. or you're not. And, and what about the flip side of that? We talk retention, but what, what about building that talent bench, right? Because obviously it's a candidate um, first market right now. Um, and there's oh, all yeah. the talk about the, you know, the, the, the great resignation. So, so what are you doing in terms of building your talent it, bench? You know, it, it, it's like, it, it's close to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying it's like close to impossible to hire. I mean, it's so mm. difficult to hire. Mm-hmm. I, I've never seen it. I mean, I, for senior management, I, I put together in some presentations, um, one of the job sites had the amount of sales salespeople, you know, within the job site, right? And it, and it, mm-hmm. and it has absolutely skyrocketed. Yeah. So, I, 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 when I started, we had a mix of kind of fifty-fifty, kind of sales development reps, prospectors to sales managers to sellers, kind of mm-hmm. you know fifty-fifty SDRs to sellers. Um, now I'm like 90, 10 SDRs. I, I am I am interviewing and hiring um, great candidates, but they're right out of school. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that is something I have I have not done in a long, long time. You know, right. and so basically now I have to have a little bit of a different horizon where um, we need to hire, um, and it's going to be a much longer period to bring folks in. Mm-hmm. But they can actually mature to a point where they can they can you know interact with prospects and sell, mm-hmm. and you just you have to do it to bring in, you know to bring in to bring in people. So I, and, I think yeah. hiring is tremendously a tremendous challenge. And then they those folks who are coming into a business straight out of school they have a very different expectation right from from their employer as maybe someone like myself who's. Um, maybe different generation, twenty plus years. Let's leave it at that. Doing, um, you know, in business, <laughs> so that it's a, so it's, a, it's accommodating for everyone, right? In this new in this new working environment. Yeah, it's different. And so, Dan, I'm with you in terms of the new, you know, a, a different generation. And yeah. um, you know, it's you know, you, you you have to kind of you know, once again, you know, you've got to make that assessment and say, you know, what is this somebody is this somebody that I want to retain, right? And I'm yeah. willing to make the investment in, um, and you know, and and just go for there, right? Go from there, mm-hmm. right? So it, it's 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 a journey, right? It's, it is definitely a journey. Yeah, it really is. So I want to take you back to when you and I met, and it has been about four or five years. And you were, you said at the top of the conversation, you you were an early adopter of Empire. And um, you brought us into um, GBT, Global Business Travel. Why did you yeah. bring us in? Because there's a lot of different um, approaches to, to sales and business. So why did you bring us? Yeah, sure. So, you know, at, at, at GBT, I felt that we had an incredible brand, right? And we were in essentially, you know, we were in business, business travel, a, a travel, a TMC, a travel management company, which is a pretty commoditized field, right? And you know, we had, you know, so we had the um, LinkedIn Navigator, mm-hmm. and LinkedIn was a part of our sales cadence. I, I, I wouldn't say it was, 
you know, super structured, but it was definitely part of our cadence. Um, it was also a sales team that hadn't been, you know, sale, they really hadn't received sales training. Mm. And I really felt like, you know, what would be, what kind of training can I provide to them that's going to help them professionally, but also personally, right? And so, you know, um, to me, you know, social selling, um, especially with the brand name that we had made a lot of sense. And, you know, on the, on the personal standpoint, it was kind of easy to get buy-in, which is like, look, everybody has a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in an expert. They're going to fix up your, they're going to fix your profile, right? They're going to, they're going to make it professionally bulletproof. Um, and we're going to give you the methods and the tool, the, the, you know, the tool set to, you know, to create demand uh, via LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. And to get better with um, and to learn about LinkedIn Navigator, right? And, and, and maximize that tool. And, um, and so people really took to it. And it, what's amazing mm -hmm. is, I, is I, I still see, I can still tell and I can still see the, you know, the, the methods that you taught, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you know, look, it's like we talked about the old, you know, the generation, I'm, I was going to say the old generation, right? The generation mm -hmm. you and I, um, you know, there was a couple channels on TV, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you, you had a couple options, right? So now um, the way to get your message out is really diverse. And LinkedIn is a very important, very important broadcast network there, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can rise above the din of what's what's going on, um, and you teach, you taught how to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I think it's great. And when I looked at LinkedIn, when I look at LinkedIn and I see colleagues that are still there, you know, doing the posts and doing the, yeah. you know, and I'm like, oh yeah, remember that? You know, like <laughs> it's 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 really great. It's kudos to you as well because. Um, so many of them were so grateful to you, but also to us for doing what we did. I've kept in touch with so many people from that <laughs> from that cohort, and they always message me and uh, keep in touch and tell me about things that they've done and tried out and got the meeting with someone who had been previously just inaccessible. You know, so uh, massive kudos to you. And, and part of obviously what we do, you mentioned, it's the brand, it's getting everyone's profiles in place. But it's a nice little segue to that topic of sales and marketing alignment. So Dan, I'm going to lay down as I talk to you about this. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, please. Um, I, 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 I do. I do have. I do have some experiences to talk about it. Um, you know, I, I, I have been part of you know a, a misalignment um, in previous roles, and it's and it's you know it's uncomfortable. And um, a real reason why I wanted to get a chief revenue officer role, I thought was okay. Look, if I can have both. If I can have kind of both, you know, pieces under under my direction, there'll be no misalignment, right? Mm. And you know, what I still found is is look, and today we don't have misalignment, but there is really good back and forth mm -hmm. um, and healthy, right, between sales and marketing. So I think I realize that you know what, it's 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 not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest takeaway I've I've kind of and I and I've been in this situation multiple times between sales and marketing, my biggest takeaway is the following. Sales needs to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Sales needs to be self-reliant. Okay. You cannot rely on any other group to preordain your success in your future. You need to do it. Okay. What is core to any sales team that I lead is prospecting, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so we're gonna make our own success. We're gonna make our own luck. Marketing is gonna help um, amplify that, and that's fantastic. But we're gonna be in control of our own destiny. Now, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit with you because with all of this, and for all sales leaders like you and I, um, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. So. I read on your LinkedIn profile, and, and, and I want to ask a little bit about how you kind of 
manage the stress and manage all of the, everything that goes with it. But I read that you um, you finished nine marathons and you've competed in more than a hundred uh, competitive races. So is that how you stay balanced? Is it is it by getting out there, exercise? Like what what is your secret? Yeah, I mean, at, at the at the end of the day, for me, it's exercise. And mm-hmm. um, you know, during the pandemic, I. I lost it. You know, I did not, I, 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 I wasn't, I mean, for me, it's running, right. I mean, for mm-hmm. me, it's running and it keeps me kind of balanced and, um, and I stopped, right. I mean, there was so much else to do and, and so, you know, and, and, and I, and, and now I've gotten back to it and, um, you know, I've got my, I got my, uh, uh, 10 K coming up in a couple of weeks and I have oh, a nice. half marathon I'm doing in, in June. So for me kind of getting back to that, uh, you know, feels really good, but, you know, once again, whatever that outlet is, um, it's really important to promote that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, so if I'm calling somebody during the day and they're outside and they're like, you know, first off, I want somebody to trust me enough to say, Hey, look, Lee, I'm taking a walk outside. I'm like, Bravo. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and, I think, you know, look, we've all learned now more than ever, you've got to, you've got to take that time and, and do whatever it is you need to do. Now I'm going to ask you, Dan, I know, and I know you've got a lot going on at home. <laughs> right? You've also got a new little one, but what, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. My, my, it's an issue. My kids are my distresser or, or whatever the word <laughs> is, but I mean, I've got all, so I've got a, uh, a kid is six. who's going to be seven in the summer. And he's at that age where he's into experiments and just wants to explore. So for me, I, I switch my mind into the mind of a, a six slash seven year old, and I'm exploring in the garden and going on, you know, uh, investigative investigatory walks behind trees and stuff. What bugs can we find in the garden? That kind of stuff. Then I've got a four year old, a little girl. Um, anything and everything relating to dancing and ballerina classes and all this sort of stuff, dance classes. So I'm taking her to those, and then I've got a three month old, right? And the best way to, for me to decompress is when I'm feeding him, got a little bottle going, looking into his little eyes, he's looking back into mine. He's just thinking, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he's going to do, you know? And, and for me, it's the kids. Like, obviously, the other stuff, yeah. the exercise and getting out there and socializing. But it's, for me, it's the kids. It's, it's just, that's why at the age of 45 and having a three-month-old, I, I love it. It's not for everyone, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, um, and by the way, I've seen pictures of you and your family. I, I'm, I'm convinced, know. you know, when you buy the, when you buy the frames and it has that family, <laughs> it comes, I, I think it's, I think it's you and your family in there. Um, but, oh, thank you. Um, but no, I mean, look, you, you've said it wonderfully and, um, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, children or exercise, whatever it is, you need it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, at the end of the day, right. Like it's, it's all about your health, right? Yeah. So you could be professionally doing great. I mean, everything good, but I mean, when you're, when you're not healthy, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a game over yeah. situation, here, right? So like yeah. to, to whatever you need to do to keep you energized and refreshed is, is really, um, yeah. is, is really the best way to go. All right, but before we let you go, if you're up for it, I would love to do a quick fire round with you. Okay, fun questions, mix your different topics. Are you uh, are you good to play? Let's do it. <laughs> and if there's anything that you say that I want to just go a little bit deeper on, we we will. But let's do it. First question: Who is your hero? I mean, the hero that that is that's a strong word, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. a really strong word. I mean, it's supposed to be fun. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, get. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. So deep right at the beginning, but you know, I, I lived. Uh, I lived in New York City uh, during 9/11. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in Greenwich. I was in the Village. Um, you know, I worked across the street from the towers. Mm-hmm. Um, a hero to me. I mean, um, you know, if if you make the ultimate sacrifice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's it, to me that is truly heroic. And so, you know, I always I, I think about um, the passengers of Flight 93. I think about mm-hmm. the firefighters and the policemen uh, who went into those towers. I, yeah. I think about everybody who was affected that day. Um, and to me, those are the heroes. I mean, you know, we talked about Chateau Generals, right? I mean, mm-hmm. a, a hero today 
is is Zelensky in Ukraine, right? That is not yeah. a Chateau General, right? right. That is a uh, you know a, a Churchillian leader. Um, and think about right how different things would be mm -hmm. um, if he left um, his country, right, and did it yeah. from abroad. So, yes. Yeah. Um, there's so many heroes. I read so many books of inspiring people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's great an answer. endless amount. Of them. Yeah, great answer. Thank you. Um, you mentioned a sales leader previously, but who is the best sales leader you've ever partnered with? I mean, it, I think partnering today would be, you know, John T. McLaren, who's at Connect and Sell. I think, um, nice. you know, he's 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 really, you know, he's really taught me, uh, re, you know, retaught me a lot about sales. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, it's all about, you know, you've got to have a a growth mindset, right? Mm -hmm. You got to have a growth mindset. I, I can't stand fixed mindsets. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so he's really, you know, fit in nicely for, you know, where I can learn all new, all again. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you a morning lark or are you a more of a night owl? I think I aspire to be a morning lark. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say morning lark. Okay. Okay. You know, um, I, 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 you I, know, night owls for me, I don't think I ever, you know, I, I know you, I know you, you could do the two, three a.m. back in the day. <laughs> I could never do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether I can do it now, but um, all right. You've got kids <laughs> as well. La last Halloween costume that you uh, you wore, Lee. I was a hat. I was I, I like wore like a hazmat suit, so I figured you know it would be good. It would be good for Halloween, and I could also you know use it in every everyday life you know so i was like the i was a hazmat person <laughs> there we go um, what's your favorite city in the world it's you know my favorite city is ann arbor michigan i went to the university of michigan spent four years there um i have a lot of great memories there i have uh i try to go back for a football game um every year and mm -hmm. uh a big smile comes to my face when i'm in ann arbor michigan love it how many cups of coffee a day zero zero dan i know you're back on the wagon <laughs> i quit i quit i quit about six months ago oh, because i i needed i needed the coffee i needed the coffee uh -huh. and so um I, I i i love coffee in fact you asking me that question is making me, making me really <laughs> tell. <tempted. laughs> All right. Um, I've been I've been doing tea. Tea has been my my jam recently. Oh, there you go. So. I'm an Englishman, so that, that resonates. All right, last question for yeah. you before we let you go, and it's a big one. What would you tell your younger self? I th I think you know. I'll, I guess I'll start off professionally. I would I would tell my youngest my younger self. Um, you know, I say find a find a you know wherever you're working, find a rabbi. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I call it, right? Find 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 somebody very successful. Um, learn from that person. Hitch your hitch your wagon, right? And um, you know, um, you know, have that person take you to you know greater heights, right? So I think mm -hmm. professionally, I, I I I've learned that. I wish I had more of that of of, of advice early. And I think, you know, I mean, personally and just in life, I think it's, um, you know, always stretch yourself. You know, I think about, um, you know, gymnasts or figure skating, right? I mean, you, you have a kind of a score based on difficulty, right? Mm -hmm. A difficulty score, right? Um, so there's performance times difficulty equals your final score. And so I think, you know, like always put yourself in in situations where it's different and uncomfortable and you're learning um you know i'm, I'm gonna my big project this summer is to, is to do some fermentation and make some make some tempeh uh, i tried my first batch it didn't work i'm gonna try to do some preservatives as well um and you know so i'm just always trying to like do something new or learn something and um Sometimes nice. they stick and sometimes, you know, um, 
you mess up and you move on to the next thing. So I want to wait until batch number ten or twelve before I invite myself exactly. back. Right? <laughs> Love it, Lee. I want to say, Matt. A massive, massive thank you, Lee. This was uh, this is so much fun.